the Sackett family, members of Saving Grace Lutheran Church. Enjoy our service today. So uh, today we're celebrating the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. The sermon is entitled Confidence in the Face of Fear. And why don't we stand as we begin our worship? We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no, no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's pause for a moment of personal reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean and have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow his commands. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is from Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7. <clears throat> Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yet my people did not hear my voice. And Israel would not hear. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That Israel would walk in my ways. I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe in fear, and their punishment would last forever. But I would feed you with the finest wheat, and satisfy you with honey from the The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and 15 and 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves are, were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, 
and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way and imitate their faith. As Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday comes to us from Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. And when he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited to someone, uh, by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down in the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both, you, uh, both of you may come to you and say, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. And then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. He said this also to the one who had invited him. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the cripple, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. There are so many things to be, um, well, a little bit worried about, right? There's uh, so many things in this world that kind of change from day to day, and I remember when I was growing up, I was, uh, I, I was a borderline extrovert. That's what my personality is. So. When I was in uh, high school, it scared me to death that I would have to stand up in front of people and, and read something. 
scared me to death. I still remember I was in elementary school and and um, I, I was a swimmer, so I saw the end of our, our uh, geography te um, text said um, what I thought said swimming up, and I thought that's cool. I get to read about swimming, so I got to that point and I raised my hand. I wanted to read, and and I said swimming up, and the teacher said that's summing up. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And I was nervous the whole rest of the time, you know. Um, I, you know, we didn't know if people were dyslexic back then, but um, I might have been dyslexic when I took Greek. I had to learn how to spell it forwards and backwards so that I knew how to spell it. So um, I was uh, probably more challenged than most. I remember um, actually staying after school, in elementary school, to learn how to read. And they would uh, take a like a, a little word like bat or no or or knowledge, and we would put it through with this little audio strip on the bottom, and I would recite it after I looked at the word and and saw it, and and I still remember going back to um, Alexandria, Minnesota, to do my first sermon while I was in seminary, and and I had written the whole thing out because I was really nervous, and I knew my parents would be there. And so I think I probably just read the whole thing, you know. I was so nervous. Afterwards, I was walking, I was greeting people as they were leaving, and a woman came up to me and she said, you probably don't know me. And I said, uh, well, I, I can't place you. She said, I was your reading teacher in elementary school. <laughs> and it was so neat to see that you read the manuscript, she said. Um, it was nice to see that things have progressed. Uh, the truth was, I wasn't very confident within myself. I wasn't very confident. Uh, well, my father was a little bit, um, <clears throat> he uh, wanted everything perfect. And I didn't think that I could match up, so I, uh, I was always nervous that I wouldn't match up to what his expectations were. The nice thing is that uh, when I stand up here, um, I have to do all my studying on the side. I have to know what I'm talking about. I have to know what the scholars say. I have to know uh, what the theology is and understand that, that it's Christ that gives me strength that I might stand up here and proclaim his word. It's not on my own that I do it. If it's on my own, then I should sit down. Huh? This is what uh, in Hebrews it's talking about. Let mutual love continue. Do not uh, neglect to show hospitality to strangers because, can you believe this? Some have entertained angels without knowing it. Isn't that neat? I can think of one story of a, of a fellow that, that had a story just like that. He was downtown Eau Claire. There was a fellow with a cane. He was standing by the side of the street, and cars were going by, and he was just standing there. He went a half a block, and he thought, you know, I should probably go back and just see how he is. And so he went back and he parked his car and this fellow was still standing there and he went over to him and he said, can I help you across the street? He said, that would be nice. I was wondering how long I'd have to wait here, he said. He helped him across the street and they got to the other side and he turned to go to his car to look back and the fellow was gone. To this day, that person thinks that maybe it was an angel that he was entertaining. Who knows? Faith sees things where those who don't believe never can see. Hmm? Let mutual love continue. Let hospital, uh, show hospitality to strangers. Some have entertained angels without knowing it. Then he goes on. We are to uh, uh, be in, in relationship with one another in such a way that, as if we are going through what they go through. So if someone is in prison, you should, you should consider them... As, as if you were in prison yourself. Those who are being tortured, you should consider yourself as, as though you were being tortured yourself. Let marriage be held in honor. Keep the marriage bed undefiled. Be content with what you have. And then he gives us a promise. I will never leave you or forsake you, says the Lord. The Lord is my helper, we can confess. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? And then he goes on that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that great news? I have a list of things that I have to improve on. My wife is helping with that list. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday we celebrated five years together 
as husband and wife. Woo! <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we have uh, ten times that to get up to where some of you are at. And um, I still say, um, yes, dear, quite a bit. But I have a list of things that I have to do to improve myself, and I'm glad that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that I can change, that he is continually working in my life to change my life. As I uh, now have uh, a little son, I've started to realize you can't change that person or have them develop into what you want them to be in just a flash, in just a moment. I still remember when I was a little kid and I looked up my, at my father, who was huge, and he was the most muscular man I had ever seen in my whole life. He wasn't muscular, but to me, he was. And um, when I looked up to him, I, I thought, someday, maybe I can be like him. And it dawned on me, I wanted to be like that right away. But it takes time, so it takes time in our lives as God nurtures us and walks with us and encourages us in our life that we might walk with him most of all. That we might have our confidence or place our confidence in him and what he is doing. There was an airline captain that uh, was ready to take off. They were going to fly to London and he said, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. He probably heard something like this when you've been on flights. He said over the loud speaker, this is your captain. We'll be crossing the Atlantic this evening at an altitude of 37,000 feet. And our estimated speed is about 730 miles an hour. We'll reach London in approximately five hours. And, and after a moment of sil silence, the captain got back on and he said, we'll take off as soon as I can get up the nerve. <laughs> <laughs> can I have a different pilot, please? <laughs> That's right. Pete says takeoff is is takeoff is optional. <laughs> Landing is mandatory. <laughs> it's all how you land. There are three air, uh, aeronautical engineer uh, professors that were on a plane. They had their seats, and flight attendant came by, saw them, and said, um, as they were taking, he was she was taking orders. She said, "Well, welcome aboard. Before we go off, I I just want to tell you that." that the plane was in, uh, built entirely by your students. Look of horror came over two of the men's, and they ran down the aisle, off, uh, the, down the stairs, and off and across the tarmac. They were running away. Now she was surprised and a little curious because the third aeronautical engineer professor was still sitting there. He said, why haven't you run away with your other two colleagues? The remaining professor answered, he said, well, if this plane was built entirely by my students, then I have the utmost confidence we won't even take off, he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Our confidence is in the one who can do all things, see. There's nothing that he can't do. And uh, perhaps the best illustration of what our relationship is is like a little boy venturing out for the first time after a snowfall. It was slippery and the boy had hands in his pockets trying to keep him warm because it was cold outside. And his father said, let me take your hand. But the boy's hands were deep in his pockets and then he slipped and he fell on the ice. His pride somewhat hurt. And a tear in his eye, he reached up with a feeble grasp to his uh, father's hand. And then he slipped again, and unable to hold on to his father's hand, he fell down again with tears in his eyes this time. He said, Daddy, you hold me, he said. You hold me. And when the slippery places came, his father held him. Huh? That's our relationship with our father. He holds us in his hands. The confidence that we have is, not, is a different type of confidence. It's not from ourselves. It's from what Christ has done. It's that he has claimed us as his own. We are his children. That he walks with us every step of the way. He never lets us go. It's a confidence in what his abilities are, not what our abilities are. It's that he can take our lives and he can mold us into the, the people that he wishes or desires us to be. Let mutual love be con uh, continual or continue. 
Let hospitality be shown to strangers. Remember that uh, those who are in prison as if it were yourselves, those who are being tortured as if it were yourselves, honor your marriage. Be free from money. Because you know what? When it comes to all the money on earth, it pales in comparison to the riches that Christ has to give us. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Perhaps it's our lives are a little bit like a recently uh, licensed pilot who was flying his private plane. He had just gotten clearance on, uh, on exp- uh, uh, doing the instrumental landings. And as he was uh, coming in for the landing, he, the tower was bringing him in, and he got a little panicky. And, and then a stern voice came over the radio, you obey our instructions, and we'll, we'll take care of the obstruction. So Christ is. He guides our lives so that even when we we see something that is in our way, we know that we are not alone. Christ guides us that we might place our trust in him. Now, in case you think this is a new thing, all way back in the Psalms, we hear of of people trusting in the Lord. Psalm 25, 4 and 5 say, "Make uh, Make known your ways, O Lord, to me. Teach me your paths, lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are my God, my God of salvation, and I have waited all day long for you. Psalm 31, 3 says, You are my rock, my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. Psalm 61, 1 and 2 say, um, I uh, hear my cry, O God. Give heed to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you, my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me your ways, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart, uh, uh, unite my heart uh, so that I may, not, may fear your, your name and no one else. Psalm 143, 8 says, Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for I trust in you. Teach me the way that I should go. And lift up my soul. James uh, 1 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, then ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to you. The truth is, we're all students. We all realize that we come to the one who is there, the master who guides us, who trusts, uh, who teaches us to trust in him. Our confidence is not in ourselves, but in Christ our rock. There was a teacher who wanted his, uh, her students to understand self-esteem or confidence. So she said if there was anyone who thought that they were stupid, they should stand up. <clears throat> One kid stood up. The teacher was surprised that anyone stood up and said, well, why did you stand up? And the student answered, well, I didn't want to leave you standing up by yourself. <laughs> When we realize that uh, we don't have all the answers, he comes alongside of us, huh? John 16, 13 says this, But when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will disclose to you what is to come. We trust in him, and there's no better place to place our trust. It's there that we find peace that passes all understanding. Matter of fact, that means that it's not about our own pride or where we find our position in society, and that's what Jesus talks about today. When we go to a banquet, sit at the lowest place of the table so that you might be beckoned to come up higher. Realize that when we come into God's presence and the banquet is set by him, that he, he bids us come and sit beside him because of what Christ has done. There was an evangelist, last little thing, evangelist named uh, Gypsy Smith. He came to believe in Christ, and, and an elderly, elderly gentleman was explaining to him the importance of trusting in Christ alone. Gypsy Smith replied, I cannot trust in myself, for I am nothing. I cannot trust in what I have, for I have nothing. I cannot trust in what I know, for I know nothing. I only, uh, the only thing for me left is to trust In Christ. In Him, in Christ, we can be confident. 
that the good work that he has begun in us, he will bring to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Now that's confidence. That's where we find our peace. Let us confess our faith in the words of the, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.